Hey guys, this is Coach Shala, and today we are going to be learning on the concepts of an array. What what is an array? How we can use an array? How we can use an array in a for loop? How we can use it to make our lives easier? How we can um, use it to make different uh, games and different projects? So first of all, we have the definition of an array right in front of us. So arrays arrays are used to store multiple values in a single variable instead of declaring separate variables for each value. To declare an array, define the variable type with square brackets. So what an array is is that array is a single variable in which we can store many different uh, uh, values in it. So, uh, for example, if we want our value changing by one every time, and we don't want to make different variables which can be very lengthy and monotonous, we can use an array and a for loop. So uh, to do that, what we need to do is we need to introduce a normal variable and an array so an array is introduced by writing the variable name uh, e entering the equal sign and with double square brackets so we um, introduce the array and uh, a normal variable and then we make a for loop and then uh, in the for loop uh, we write all the conditions which need to be met while running the for loop so uh, we're going to be learning just how to do that today we're making a really simple uh, program in which like i'll show you we will make a simple program in which um, in which we um, we will be enter the computer will be asking us how many marks we got in certain subjects and um, we'll enter the marks and then it will display it to us you and we'll do all of that using just one array and it's less than 10 lines of code if you are if you think that it will be too difficult it's only 10 lines of code so let's go ahead and first of all we need to make a project in which we'll be writing our code so I'll go wherever I make my projects and I'll make a new project I make me a new folder and then I'll name this folder for example learning arrays and then I'll copy and paste the content which was in one of my games for example this one i'll just copy all the files and paste them in my learning arrays folder and then we'll just change the sketch.js uh, that's the code and that's the file in it in which we'll write the code so uh, now we'll open visual studio And here it is. So this is the sketch.js which I copied and pasted in my um, in my uh, like uh, desktop. So I'll just remove that because we'll make changes to the sketch.js. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll make changes to sketch.js. And now I'll open the web server. It's already connected to the learning arrays, and then I will as you see there is no outcome right now because we have not coded anything right so now what we'll do is that we'll be coding uh, our game our project so what we what do we want we want that the computer asks us how many marks we got in subjects so um so what we'll do is that first of all we'll introduce an array so we'll write var array sorry r because array is predefined and we'll write the equals to sign and a square bracket so we've defined the array now we need to define a variable which will be changing according uh, to the stage in which the for loop is in so we'll make a variable i and we won't give it any value now we'll have to make the for loop 
the for loop so what we have to do to make the for loop is of course we need to uh, make the for loop like that and we have to um like write something in between these this bracket right here uh, so what we need to write what do we need to write so that is uh, first of all, we need to uh, give the i a value. So just uh, just telling you that in the in the in these brackets in the for loop, we need to give three values. So these three values are the um, the first value of our variable which we've defined for the for loop. Then uh, till how till when the for loop is going to run. And we have to increment or decrement um, the variable according to our needs. So for the first step, I will give i a value of one. Then for the second um, second uh, value which we have to give to the for loop, uh, uh, before giving the second value, we have to put a semicolon semicolon we have to tell the computer to when our for loop is going to run so our for loop is going to run till i is uh, uh less uh, till i is less than or equal to for example three and then uh, at last we have to put a semicolon and increment i's value a semicolon increment i value so what this will do is that the computer it will read line four and it will give the i a value of one so during the computer's first read it doesn't read these other other two uh, values it doesn't read them it just skips on to the uh, content which you've given right in the uh, in the for loop right and when the computer has um like when the computer has carried out the content which we've given it to do it will go back um to over here so when it comes back over here it will uh, sorry i was wrong about uh, like uh, it it reads these two values and it does not increment it so it reads this so when if the uh, i value if it's less than three which is which it is right now it will go into line five and then it will read what all we've written in line five and then when it's carried out that it's going to go back to line four it's going to see if it's uh, if it can work again if it's less if i is less than three it is and then it's going to increment i and when it's incremented i will become two from before when it was one so that's how the for loop works so i hope you've understood and if you haven't understood you can always ask me from the comments below so now what we need to do is we need to tell the computer that whenever our for loop is in action our a uh, computer asks us uh, our marks from the project right so there is a predefined value i mean a predefined variable which we can um which we can um write in our code which is document dot write so document dot write what uh, document dot write what it does is that whatever we tell our um whatever we tell in whatever we write inside our document or write uh, it, it will um it will uh, print it in the main screen but right now we want to uh, make the computer ask us something so what we'll do is that we will um, write prompt so prompt this is another predefined variable in which the computer uh, it uh, it will show us like over here uh, like over here it will ask us it will say uh, the link this link it will say this link is asking you and then it will ask the question and then there will be a bar in which we can uh, ask the uh, i mean which we can enter our value so over here i write a prompt because then it will ask us prompt and in double qu uh, quotes what were your marks in subject i will use string concatenation over here 
and put a space here and write I. So what this line does is that, um, actually I'll show you. What this does is that when we reload it, it will ask this link says, so whatever the links over here says, what were your marks in subject one? So over here, we've only written what were your marks in subject in double quotes and then we left a space. So uh, what it does is that first of all, it's only going to print what were your marks in subject and then a space and then uh, we've written a plus right over here if you can see there's a plus and i plus i so what that does is plus it um that's that's called string concatenation so str uh, string concatenation is when we join a value any value to a, um, a string so that's what we've done right over here so in the for loop right now the value is i uh, i mean the value of i right now is one so it will see that if it, if the for loop can work which which it sees if the va if the second value of the for loop is true if it's true it's not going to increment in the first read so then it will go over here it will it will do prompt what were your marks in subject and right now plus the uh, the value of i is one so it will write what were your marks in subject one as you can see over here what were your marks in subject one so um when we yes for example if we write if we tell the marks for example i got 89 marks i'll enter it and then it will ask me what were your marks in subject two this is because when it uh, carries out this content uh, this um, line of code it will go back to the for loop right and then um, it will see that okay i can carry out this um, for loop because it, uh, the value is still less than three so then it will increment it so while incrementing the value of i will become two so then it asks what were your marks in subject plus i and right now the value of i is two and this will keep on happening until uh, the, the value of i is three uh, so um, uh, we can I i'll just show you what were your marks in subject so for example if i write 92 and then it will also ask me what are your marks in subject 3 for example i write 82 and then it won't ask me anything it will go away because um, uh, when the value of i becomes uh, more than 3 for example 4 the for loop won't work because the for loop will only run until the value of i is either less than or equal to 3. So that's when the for loop will break. Like just for fun also we can do different things and we can do document or write as I was telling you before in this video. So what document or write is that whatever we write in the document or write it will display on the main screen over here the main screen. So for example if we write document document dot write and brackets uh, we can write and we can write anything in brackets like uh, hello right and then it will show you in the um, main screen five six seven hello 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 so this was like it it printed hello three times because uh, the for loop also works three times but uh, the hello we can also change it into the marks which we got so the marks which we got they are stored in r i and these are not in double quotes because there are there they are a variable right and then we can also write that document dot write in double quotes br so what this br is it's it basically stands for a blank row and it will it will leave a line for the next text so if i just run it what were your marks in subject one 90 marks and then 80 marks and then 99 marks it will show undefined 
because we haven't stored the value in the ri so we haven't stored the value in r so what we need to do to that is where we've written prompt where what were your marks and subject plus i in line five we have to write r i is equal to prompt and um what we must know so what this does is th this is where array comes into action uh so prompt so i did uh, like the array it has indexes so what indexes are is that uh, they are they are the position in which a value is stored so the very first index of an array is zero and then it's one it's two three four so on uh, so what 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 happens is that ri i equals to one so in the first index of the array uh, forget about the zero index the the really first index of the array so the second index of the array which in this case is one which is i um the value which we've entered in uh, when the computer asks us what were your marks this store this is stored in the array so it's stored in the array in the index uh, of one because right now i's value is one when the i's value becomes two uh, and uh, and the computer asks us what were your marks in subject two um the value which we have we would have returned it which will go into r r2 the third in the um i hope you've understood the concepts of the array and if you want to run it we can show what were your marks in subject one 90 um, 98 and 67 and over here the, it's displayed 90 98 67 so i hope you've understood the concepts of an array how we can use an array in the for loop and the document or write predefined function so if you find the content resourceful please like and subscribe the video and i'll see you in my next lesson